Hi everybody, we will be going uh, live shortly with this masterclass, but I'm a couple of minutes early, so I thought I would come on and check all the technology first. So I'm just going to check all my technology so that I can actually talk to you when you are on here. So let me just check. Oh, here we go. So there will be a little bit of a delay um, with, so I'm looking at you on my iPad. So I'm seeing who's coming on on my iPad because I'm doing this from Zoom. So because I'm doing this from Zoom, there is this little bit of a delay. So just bear with me if you send me a message. Hi, Sage Wisdom. Thank you for being here. You're the first person to say hi. So welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm looking forward to doing this masterclass with you. So I'll just uh, wait until the actual 7 p.m. to actually go live on the masterclass so that I can get as many people to join us and have fun. Oh, hi, Michelle. Hi. Lovely to see you. Good to see you here. OK, so let me just check. This is all going all right. Good. Excellent. Good, good. Oh, uh, hi there. Raise your vibration. I'm sure that is. Uh, oh, it's Laurie. Laurie, Laurie. Hi, Laurie. Lovely to see you. Yeah, if you've got uh, a name that is not your name, <laughs> then just let me know what your your name is. Hi, Kristen. Hi from Germany. Yeah, if you can just say hi. Um, as you've come on a little bit earlier, and so have I, to say hi and where you're from. Be really lovely. Hi, Sharon. So it's good to have you here. Okay. So we're on the top of the hour now, so I'm going to start the presentation. Okay. So I'm just going to share my screen with you. Okay. Here it is. So just bear with me. Let's go. Um, bear with me a sec. Ah, oh, here we go. Slideshow. All the technology. Okay, so welcome to Connecting and Working with Your Guides. And I'm Susan Kennard. Obviously, as you know, you're on my YouTube channel. So thank you so much for being here and joining me and subscribing to the channel. So why am I doing this? The question is, why did I decide to do this? Well, I have been teaching mediumship for a very, very long time. I've been teaching, working with your guides for a long time. And that all stems from the fact that many, many years ago, I had a spiritual awakening, which led me to understand that we were so much more than who we were. So at that time, I was actually working as a psychologist in child protection. So I have a couple of degrees in psychology and a postgraduate in uh, psychotherapy. And I also trained in meta health, which is a bit like neuropsychology. So um, I'm known as a spiritual scientist and I incorporate my science background. So we're helping people to heal their trauma, to heal their dis-ease, along with being a channel to source. And so essentially what that means is that I'm clairvoyant, which means I can see. Uh, so I can see into the body, I can see spirit, I can see my guides, I can see your guides, I can see your loved ones and so on. And uh, I actually am clairsentient, which means I can feel. And I'm clairaudient, which means I hear my guides. And uh, those of you that work with me and know, um, know, know me will know that I'm often going, oh, thank you very much, as I'm talking as if I've got my best friend with me. And that's essentially what uh, this is all about. Uh, so I work with my guides. Uh, many of my guides are galactic guides. Uh, many of them are other different realms. Uh, and we have many guides that work with us. And I'll be talking more about that as we go through the presentation. And then we're going to get to actually connect and work with our guides, which is really going to be fun. But that's just like a, a little introduction to who I am and why I'm 
the kind of person that wants to hold this for you because I feel that more than ever now is really, really important for us to be able to trust our guidance and to really know and remember who we are. So that's why I put this together. I also run a channeling course, which is a six week channeling course. And it's for those who already have a relationship with their guides, okay? So I used to run a beginners, but I don't run that anymore because I really don't feel that we have any beginners. I feel that we're, you know, on this ascension pathway, we're remembering who we are and some of us already are on our mission and living our true soul's path. So um, I'm sure many of my members uh, will be turning up here. I can see you all uh, saying hi, which is really beautiful. And I have a Souls Mission membership where I really help and hold your hand through aligning to your mission. And part of that is really aligning to trusting your inner guidance and your team of guides. Okay, so I'll just have a look. Um, my goodness, there's so many of you on here. Thank you so much for uh, sharing, you know, where you're from and saying hello. It's really beautiful. And Jade, thank you, my love. Thank you, Jade's. Um, well, she's just basically uh, saying that, you know, it, it's wonderful to connect and she's on the Souls Mission uh, membership. And I know that she's really enjoying it and valuing the time. And we meet five times a month, so it's really good fun. I'll tell you more about that later. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so what are guides and how do you know that they're around? And this is a really good question. So when we came into this experience, we are a soul having a human experience and uh, we have a physical vehicle, which is our body, and that is the barometer for our soul. So what we decided when we came, and, and this time it is university, this time it is definitely university, a master's degree level and PhD coming to this earth at this time. And we decided we would have a few things, okay? One is our body would talk to us and tell us when we were out of alignment with our mission or unconditional love, which to be honest is one and the same thing. Okay, so when we're in on our mission, we are a frequency of unconditional love, seamless love of ascension, I talk about quite a lot. So essentially that was one thing that we chose. Another thing we chose was to come in to forget, to remember. So we have the birthing experience, don't we? Remember when we're in the womb, we then have the birthing experience. That birthing experience may have been shocking, may have been traumatic. And then we kind of have amnesia about why we're here. So our soul definitely knows why we're here, okay? That, that never changes. Our soul has chosen the reason for being here. But we forget on a conscious level, on a human level, why we're here and you know some people say it's a big experiment and i'm i probably would go with that too that we're here as an experiment we're here to experience emotion we're here to bring consciousness and raise the light on the planet and to help others heal from it so essentially we've got our body our soul knows who we are but we're coming and we forget and the other thing that we also chose was to know that we were never on our own Okay, so we were never on our own. We were never meant to feel on our own. And so that feeling of separation is only from the aspects of ourselves that are in shock and trauma. We are actually always connected to God's source energy and to our guidance. So this is where we come into the guides. So we've had many lifetimes, uh, many experiences, many timelines that we've been on. And each timeline and each experience, whether we've been physically human or another form, we have had guides. And those guides have been with us, holding our hand all of the way. And some of those guides, which I call the council, some of those guides have actually been with us in every single lifetime. But 
we have other guides that oscillate and come in and come out depending on where we are on our mission and depending on what we're choosing to bring out into the world, i.e. our gifts. So that's why we have guides and what guides are, but essentially they are essentially our hand-holding. They are the ones that kind of push us forward. They're the ones, their job is really to assist us. But one of the things we have to remember is that we have to ask, okay? And we'll come to that a bit later on. So how do we know that they are around? Well, this picture, says to us that you know and many of you probably have seen this before is that we often see white feathers and so this can be the presence of an angel or a guide just letting us know that they're very much here for us and that whatever we're going through in that moment actually they're just letting us know that we're not on our own the other ways that we know our guides and angels are around is when we sometimes might feel you know um, a brush in our hair or someone we feel like someone's touching our hair we might might smell something so we might smell a perfume uh, or a particular fragrance and sometimes that can be loved ones coming in as well to assist us so we might get that memory or even cigarette smoke or cigar smoke sometimes but with our guide it's always something that is really incredibly beautiful we also might get a sense of warmth and we're going to go into the signature of our guides a bit later but we might get warmth we might get a little chill we might get a sense of um cobwebs but not in a weird way but just in the sense of um, a very gentle feeling on our face sometimes and I have had this um, I get an itchy nose where one of my guides is coming close so it's just it depends on um, who's working with you at the time and what they want to give you but essentially once you start to open up to this you start to notice and you can ask for signs as well, but you start to notice that the guides are around you. So I'm just gonna check in with um, anyone wanting to say anything about that. Just let us know in the chat, have you experienced a witnessing of your guides around you, either with feathers, either with little notes, you know, like something comes up maybe, in the video screen you know there'll be a particular message and it'll be like oh my goodness i was just thinking about that or i just wanted to know the answer to that you know or anything like that i've definitely um found i've opened my car sometimes and there'll be a you know the boot of my car and there'll be a feather in the boot of my car or be on the dashboard or the other way is um and my very good friend Roshni, um, she sees lots of numbers and actually many people do. And triple numbers, double numbers, you know, coded numbers, because that lets you know, and you can look up what the numbers mean. Many angel numbers mean that, you know, you're being guided to the next step of your mission or that, you know, um, there's a divine compliment nearby or something like that or there's manifesting happening so 888 is a really good one for that if you see 888 you might be in the throes of just really manifesting something quite big in your life right and 111 is often uh, very much about your spiritual journey ah oh, so yeah Kristen that's good songs I heard one the other day and it's like, oh, what's that mean? And I'm like, oh, what does that song actually mean? What do those words actually mean to me? Um, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, so so many different things here. Uh, numbers, watching films. Yeah, exactly. So getting um, beautiful, beautiful messages from our spirit guides and for those loved ones that are on the side other side as well so we do tend to get those messages okay and digits double digits as well so i love this i like i hope you like the picture it's really good fun uh what is the difference between being a psychic and being a medium okay so I am a medium and I'm also a psychic and a channel and I do light language and 
um, many other things, <laughs> and I channel healing. But I wanted to talk to you about the difference between being psychic and being a medium, okay? And I hope you like the picture, it's very funny. So we don't all sit there with our crystal balls, some people do, um, but the difference between a medium and a psychic, I'll start with a medium. A medium is someone who is able to communicate evidence of survival, okay? So what that means is a medium can speak to, hear from, um, clairvoyantly see, many mediums can see, like myself, some can't, they hear or they just get a sense. But mediums are essentially that conduit, that, that middle ground to bring through messages and evidence of survival. So when I teach mediumship, I teach it in a very professional way because I was actually trained at the College of Psychic Studies in Kensington in London, and also the SAGB, which is in Victoria and London, which is the Spiritualist Association of Great Britain. Great Britain. <laughs> and so essentially I was trained really professionally. So when I teach, I teach very professionally. And you'll know why in a moment, because I'll go through the steps with you and teach exactly how to connect with your guides in a safe held way. Okay, so a medium is somebody who, you know, connects with those from the other side, gives evidence of survival, and then a message. A medium doesn't use tools, oh, well, you can use a crystal ball or whatever, or hold, um, or hold a piece of jewellery, which is called psychometry. We can do that, but essentially a medium is giving evidence of survival, okay? A psychic is someone who doesn't give evidence of survival, however, can tap into messages for you. So they might use they might use no tools at all. They might just just be tapping in psychically, but just not giving evidence of survival. Um, so they, or they might use tarot cards. They might use oracle cards. They might um, use a pendulum. They might use uh, a crystal ball, as we can see in this picture here. They might use, um, what else? They might use, yeah, they might use somebody's piece of jewelry, which is psychometry, as I mentioned before. And they also might just tune in to the energy field of the person, okay? And that's the difference between a medium and a psychic. So any questions about that? And I'm gonna wait for the delay and see um uh any questions that you might have and i'm just reading yeah absolutely um it was incredible training and because of that i have a particular recipe that the way that i teach and i'm going to share that with you today i'm going to share that with you so that you actually know my recipe exactly how I train people and exactly how I would work with people. Okay. All right. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, yes, absolutely. A person can be both. I'm both. So I work psychically and I also can work as a medium. So yeah, absolutely. You can be absolutely both. I just wanted to give a definition between the two of them so that you can understand that if you wanted to go and have um, a mediumship reading with someone, then you know what you're getting. You're getting evidence of survival. And if someone says they're a medium and they don't give evidence of survival, then that's not really what being a medium is about. That means that they're a brilliant psychic, but they're not necessarily a medium. Okay. Uh, Laurie, thank you. Yeah, Laurie, that's um, a really good question. Okay. All right. Okay, so. Oh, yes, I can, Eva. Absolutely. Evidence of survival. Okay, so evidence of survival is, in my, in my opinion, is three really good pieces of evidence. So it might be um, how someone looks. It might be what they passed with. Um, it could be a memory 
that they would have of you being in their life. So they might show me um, childhood experiences. They might give me, you know, like sometimes they come in and say they used to play cards with someone. They will show parts of their house sometimes. They will give memories, but they will also say what they passed with. They will also um, work with, you know, they'll say they're on this side of the family, so on the maternal side or the paternal side. They'll tell me whether they were great grandmother, grandmother. They will say, you know, who they are as well. So really good pieces of evidence would be evidence of survival, okay? Okay, Deanna, absolutely, um, really good question. People can learn mediumship, absolutely. And it is, and obviously I, I teach it in a way where um, it's very held, it's very safe and so on. But what I will say to you is that sometimes we are not meant to be mediums. So um, I have many good friends um, that are incredible psychic channels for healing. OK, but they're not necessarily somebody who is here on this earth to give evidence of survival. OK, so if you feel drawn to be a medium and if you feel drawn to do that, then there's a reason. And your soul is calling you to actually um, embark on that journey if it feels if it feels drawn to you. It's essentially you're being guided. OK. Um, that's okay, Pat. Don't worry um, that you came in late. It's on YouTube, so we don't have to worry about missing out on anything. Okay, so if you're okay, I'm going to uh, move on to the next slide. So, yeah, really good this creating a sacred space. All right. So, the way that I teach and the way that I'm going to help you guys with this is I always create what I call is a sacred space. And the reason for that is many reasons. So we're, one of the main reasons is that we are honoring spirit, okay? So we're honoring our spirit teams that work with us. We're honoring, so if we're working as a medium, we're honoring those coming through. And we are also honoring ourselves. So we're creating a sacred space. Some of the things that, uh, might be a sacred space would be that you wouldn't be in a pub you wouldn't be um, necessarily in drinking any alcohol uh, you wouldn't be obviously not taking drugs but you wouldn't do anything like that you would want to keep your energy field really clear and you want to as well create from a place of the highest and best so I'm just going to give you an example. So um, whenever I teach, whenever I do anything, whenever I work with clients or run my groups, I always create a sacred space. And I'm going to be doing that with you in a moment. I've already done it before I came on the live, but I'm going to teach you how to do it. So we create the sacred space. And then I know that only beings of pure, pure, unconditional love are coming into our experience and i also know that only beings that are ready on our frequency to work with us will step in all right so we're setting a pure intention all right any questions about that I'm just going to see there's a bit of delay okay if you have a question there's literally about a 60 second delay here. Okay. All right, I'll get to that. I'll get to that in a moment, um, Sage of Wisdom. Okay, so I always, I hope you like the picture. It's really funny. So I always create a clearing statement to prepare and connect with my guides. All right. And always whenever I'm working with um, clients. So in between clients, I always say a statement. Right. And so I've put one up here for you um, with the funny picture. I put one up for you, which is creator. All that is it is commanded that you pull, clear, cancel and delete 
or waywards, watches, entities, and unwanted thought forms from my energy field and send to unconditional love. It is done. Allow me to create a sacred space to be a pure, clear channel of light. All right? So this is what I do, and sometimes it varies, but essentially this statement is something that I do in between clients. Every single day of my life, I do that clearing statement, and every single night. So I want you to have this, and this is why I put together a presentation, because I really felt that by having it on slides like this, you can actually utilize it in a much better way than if I'm just talking. So you can flip through and you can find the slide, you can take a screenshot of it, and you can just keep the statement for yourself. I don't at night say, allow me to create a sacred space to be a pure clear, clear channel of light, because I don't need to do that. But I always do clear my energy field. And those of you that um, work with me, uh, you know, you know that whenever I do any work, any um, private sessions, anything at all, any interviews, when I get interviewed on, on shows, I always prepare and do the clearing statement beforehand, okay? And so just to explain a little bit about Wayward's Watchers Entities, okay? You know what unwanted thoughts are, right? Uh, so yeah, I hope, I'm glad you like the uh, funny, funny picture. I thought it was funny. So waywards are essentially um, those beings that have passed over, but don't know that they've passed over. Okay, so they are, they're called waywards because they're really sort of hanging around in our energy field. They don't mean it. They don't mean to. And so what we're doing is we're giving them that opportunity to actually go to the light to unconditional love. Watchers are those that are coming in to, it's hard to explain, but those that are coming in to um, sometimes interfere with the beautiful light work that we're doing, okay? So those are what watchers are, and you know, feel free to ask me any questions about that, but I don't wanna to get too far into the negative stuff today. Um, entities are really um, those that, are coming in from that are attracted to our frequency and those are coming in to um, interfere once again but often stay attached to our energy field okay and they're just attached to bits of our trauma bits of our um, um unwanted emotions that we've got held within our field and so they're just attracted to that and if you imagine that we are this light source but that we have dusty bits in our field and that our inner work is our key really, okay? So we're essentially just saying, we're saying that statement so that we don't even have to think about it. We know that the space we're in is clear, we know that we're clear, and we also know that the person that we're working with, uh, whether it's our friend or a client or uh, anyone at all, is actually clear as well. So then we know that we can invite our guides in. And we'll go to that step in a moment. But then we know we're in that space where we can actually feel completely confident, completely okay. And we know that we're inviting in from a pure place of unconditional love. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. So one of the other things um, that I haven't written on here that's coming to me, my guides are reminding me, is when uh, what I've been doing recently is saying to spirit as well to help anyone over that has passed over in a hasn't passed over yet but has 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 died or you know um transitioned in a way that was shocking for them and um, we know that there's lots of people leaving the planet uh, right now and have been for quite a long time and they are really attracted to our light and they really want to be connected to us. And so I often do do a, a clearing statement that goes something like this, which is, um, and all those that need to pass to the light to go now with unconditional love. And then I often can see the energies leaving 
and allow them to go to almost like a portal of light above you and your guides will help with that as well but i often just do that at the moment a lot because we have many people that have passed over in circumstances maybe they've been on their own maybe they haven't realized that they've gone um and maybe they've had sudden sudden death experiences okay so ah uh, diana how can we be sure that the space is clear well this is all about trust so when we are commanding from creator I just have a bit of water to go and that's a reminder get some water before we uh, start working with the guides right so when we are commanding from creator we are literally commanding it to be all right so it doesn't mean we're you know being controlling or anything like that we are just commanding in our sovereign birthright all right so if you imagine that we are sovereign beings and we've come in and we can manifest we can create we co-create with the universe we know when we're out of alignment because we can listen to our body we've got our guides and we are sovereign so we can command that everything is cleared out of the way all right so we trust that because we know we're sovereign beings of light so i hope you that makes sense to you okay so i'm going to move on with the slide okay and just see if anyone would like to uh, leave a comment or a message or any questions around the clearing statement okay good so it looks like we're going on to grounding and connecting okay good so grounding and connecting is really really key so the reason for that is that so we've cleared we've cleared our space we're in a sacred space we know that we are you know in a place of unconditional love and we know that everything coming into our space will be of that frequency okay so grounding and connecting is where we're actually really intentionally so if you look at the picture here you can see the light coming down from the head and right the way through the body okay so as we're grounding and connecting we are grounding into mother earth and we are connecting to universal consciousness and light okay which is all that is right so as we're doing that we are coming into that space of peace and calm okay so it's really important so the first part of the recipe is our intention and our clearing of our space and then we do the grounding and connecting so i'm just going to go to the next slide here so what i have created that i've worked with um, for many many years now and is actually in my um part of one of the processes in my up and coming book awaken the light within your heart I have put all my processes in there actually. And one of them is the Earth Star Soul Star. Now I didn't create the Earth Star Soul Star. I just was channeled how to actually align to the Earth Star Chakra and the Soul Star Chakra. Nowadays, the way I see it in this ascension frequency is almost like a crystal star. So when I found um, this picture, which I actually really, really like, um, I thought, wow, actually, what's under the feet there is kind of almost how I see it. So the crystal star that I see under the feet now is actually our Earth star. So we're going to we're going to do this process in a moment. I'm going to teach you this in a moment. And those of you that work with me know it. And then the soul star essentially is like that. I see it like this incredible expanded light that is really sparkling. OK, so we have our earth star chakra and it's below our feet and our soul star chakra, which is above our head. That also connects us to unified consciousness and essentially holds all of the lifetimes knowledge that we've ever lived okay and the earth star connects us to mother earth to gaia and now to this new golden earth that we're all creating here and essentially 
it is our connection to being human. So when I see someone's energy field where they are sitting on top of Mother Earth, so I see them with the Earth star just on the top and not in Mother Earth, I know that there will be something where they didn't feel supported by Mother or they didn't feel safe in this world because it stops them from feeling safe being human. Okay? So just type in the comments if you ever have felt that or if you have a sense that you find it hard to manifest in this life and possibly that you had a circumstance with your mother in this lifetime that didn't feel supportive, that you felt almost like you were doing it on your own. Let's see what people say. Hi, Veronica. Let's just, I'm just going to wait for any comments on that because I think that's quite a, a really important thing is to understand that if you can't manifest really well on your mission, then there is something about you not feeling safe as a human in this lifetime. Yeah, so Kristen said, yes, I feel like it's getting better, but absolutely felt like I couldn't ground. Absolutely. That's how it is. Yeah. Right. So, okay. So Sage Wisdom said, I find it difficult to ma manifest and certainly didn't have a good relationship with my mother. Yeah. I find that these um, go really, 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 really um, hand in hand our relationship to mother, our relationship to mother earth, our relationship to being human. And of course we were meant to manifest in human form. You know, when we're in spirit, it's easy, we just, it's just, a, it's just literally who we are. But when we're in human form, we have to remember that we have to be connected and grounded into mother earth. Okay. Yeah, absolutely, Pagati. Pagati said, I'm grounded as I couldn't speak to my mother about any problems. Yeah, exactly. Okay, Sharon. Sharon says she struggled a lot uh, with grounding but getting there. Wow, there's so many, so many, so many comments here. Yeah. Yeah, so it makes sense, right? It makes sense to you that... Um, if you don't feel connected. So when we do this exercise, if you don't feel that you're really grounded into the Earth Star, then know that your inner work might be around um, cutting of the ties with mother. Um, it's a process that's definitely in my book, but it's also part of my Sparkle to Success program. You can find on my website, just my name, susankennard.co.uk. It's a self-study um, process that you can go through. But essentially, you, you need to make peace and heal those aspects of your relationship to mother because that's your relationship to Mother Earth. And, and if resentment's there as well, that also affects the heart energy and the ability to receive. All right. So there's many things in our frequency. OK. Ah, oh, Pat, that's interesting. Uh, Pat says... Uh, I've always felt close to Gaia, but not to my human mother. Absolutely. Well, you know, we came to be close to Gaia. We came to build um, beautiful light for Mother Earth and to heal Mother Earth. But we have to heal ourselves because we are part of that. So, you know, we're not responsible for anyone else. We're not responsible for healing anyone else. We're responsible for healing ourselves. And so we came in, you know, to remember that, to bring more light within ourselves so that the planet expands. Yeah. Yeah, Kitty, my mother passed when I was 12. She had been sick for five years and mothered me and siblings. Yeah. So having a loss like that um, is something you've chosen. You know, it, it's a lifetime that you would have chosen to experience this time. but it can affect your ability to ground and connect. Okay, so um, it's great to have all, all, all of those things. And Christine said um, that she felt unsupported by mum and she does find it hard to manifest and ground sometimes. It makes total sense, Chrissy. Okay, 
All right, so let's connect with our guides. So we've got the three things, create a sacred space, ground and connect, and invite your guides, okay? So you can see all your guides there. Let me just, okay, I'm just gonna go back one sec. Let's just go back, bear with me a second. We'll work out how to go back. Right, I feel like what I want to do first is to actually take you through this process. And I feel like it's quite important to take you through this process so that you can feel this connection to your earth star chakra and your soul star chakra, okay? So let's come into our heart space. Okay. And before we do that, we're going to do the clearing statement. So I'm going to say it out loud. And if you can just repeat it, I want you to get a sense of how that feels to you. Okay. Creator, all that is, it is commanded that you pull, clear, cancel, and delete on all four levels and resolve on the history level. Any waywards, any watchers, any entities, any attachments, any thought forms, anything that does not serve me now, and send it to pure, unconditional love. Allow me to be a pure, clear channel of light. Okay, so just take that deep breath now. Good, and just check in and, and get a sense of how you now feel. Good. And so if you want to, you can close your eyes. I'm going to keep my eyes open for the purpose of this presentation, this video. But close your eyes if you feel you'd like to. And I want you just to feel the sense of a golden light in your heart. So just feel that sense of a golden light just expanding in your heart. And just allow that to expand throughout the whole of your body as you breathe. And then I want you to imagine that you're sending that golden light down to your feet. And as it goes down to your feet, you start to feel, sometimes you can start to feel a tingling of the energy. And then I want you to imagine that earth star under your feet. So you might like to imagine it like a crystal star and get a sense of the color of it. Maybe it's iridescent, maybe it's a particular color. And then I want you to imagine that that earth star is going into mother earth. And I want you to imagine that that earth is a golden earth. So the frequency of mother earth is changing. And so for us to be that frequency with her, We'll put our earth stars down into the center of Mother Earth. And then I want you to imagine a beautiful silver cord going down, grounding you even further. Good. So now I want you to bring that golden light from your heart up to the crown of your head and just feel that expansion. And then just above the crown of your head, so the top of your head, just above the top of your head, I want you to imagine that there is a beautiful starlight. So imagine like a big star, but that star is so expanded. And that is your soul star. And that connects you to unified consciousness and light and it has all the answers for you, all the knowledge. And I want you to bring that beautiful light down from the soul star 
all the way through you and the way the guides are showing it to me for you is like a column of light in the core of you. So imagine that beam, that column of light down into the core of you. Okay, good. And then I want you to expand that out almost as if you're sitting in this beautiful cylinder of light. Okay. And then expand out a bit further, maybe into the room that you're sitting in. Okay. Fantastic. So we'll just come back for a moment before we invite our guides. So I'm just going to um, wait for the time to connect. Okay, good. And come back in a moment. And I want you just to uh, tell me how you feel now. So this is just the grounding and connecting part. And I just want you to tell me how you're feeling. How grounded and connected do you feel? And let me know. I'm going to look at your, your comments. Let me know. Okay, so Kristen says peaceful. That's brilliant, Kristen. It's fantastic. So the peace comes when we are really connected and we're really grounded and we really get that sense of being. Oh, I really loved what the guides did, which was to bring that channel of light down. So it's really connecting us in a deep way. There's no mistake that you guys are listening to this, either listening to this in the now moment or listening in the now moment on the replay. And Chantal's yawning a lot. Okay, that's good, Laurie, that you're grounded. That's really good. Pat's tingling. Shivers and connection and tingling. Brilliant. Kitty. Feels like a vine around my thighs is cleared, amazing. Pagati, more color and bright. Yeah, that's what happens when we're connected. Sensations in the forehead and crown. Yeah. And I will just talk about that a little bit. So, as you can see in this picture, there's the chakras. That's not how I see chakras these days, by the way. When I see the energy centers in someone's field, I see them very differently. And the colors do not depict like that anymore. They're very high vibrational colors. Um, for example, the crown is golden. Um, the throat energy is turquoise sparkling light. You know, it's like very, very different. But essentially, we've got all of those energy centers, our chakras and many more um, that are just developing all of the time. But essentially, they are connecting up so that we are in full alignment. Okay, all right, so. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, you can try the star, you can try what works for you. Um, the, the cylinder of light as well, Lanelle, thank you for saying that. Yeah, it feels more expanded. I feel what the guides did there was they brought in that cylinder where, and remember we're doing this collectively. So we're really connected in, in the strong energy of being together on this call. So group consciousness is really powerful and, you know, really powerful at the moment in this sandwich of eclipses. <laughs> so there's no mistake that this was the time to do this, um, to do this event. Okay. Very peaceful. Brilliant. Okay. So we've created a sacred space. We've grounded and connected. So let's, we're going to be calling our guides in now. Okay. So we're going to invite our guides in now. Okay. So I'm going to take you through this. Um, come back into your heart center. So you're already beautifully grounded and connected. So we're going to talk about the signature of our guides. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to give you a little example of how you can actually feel your guides or you can understand the signature of your guides. And I call it a signature because they all have a different signature, okay? 
I work with um, Mother Mary, Jeshua, Ashtar from the Galactic Command, the Palladians, the Acturians, the Syrians, many different guides, and they all come in in a different way. Uh, the Palladians, for example, will say, um, we are very pleased to assist you, and they're very, very polite, okay? And then Mother Mary will come in and she'll work with me and she'll come to the right of me and she'll come in with this beautiful soft energy and uh, those of you that know that work with me i do light language and i do toning as well so mother mary will come in and she will she will sing to your inner child so you know they come in in many different ways okay so i'm going to give you um an experience now of inviting your guides in. So um, what I'm being guided to do, uh, so this is my team, I'm being guided uh, for you to bring in your council of light, all right? So that way you don't get involved in the names of the guides or anything like that, because that can be quite tricky uh, and definitely on a group call. But essentially we're gonna invite in our council of light. So our council of light has traveled with us with all lifetimes, all right? So we're in our heart center and we close our eyes and unless you want to keep your eyes open, that's also perfectly fine. Sometimes I work with my eyes open, sometimes closed. So we're going to invite in our council of light. So I want you just to say out loud or in your heart, I invite my council of light to step in by my side. Okay. So they may come in behind you, they may come in at the side, wherever they come in. So invite them to step in. Okay, just get a sense. And then now I want you to invite them to step out. Okay. And now I want you to invite them to step in. So invite them to step in. Okay, good. And now invite them to step out again. And now ask them to step in the closest that they can with your frequency. So invite them to step in. They're not coming into you or anything like that. We're not doing trance mediumship. We are just inviting our guides, guides to blend with our energy. All right. Good, good, good. Okay. So let's come back and see what um, you experienced with that. And so essentially that is listening to a signature, okay? So I'm gonna look on here. So let's see, how did you get on with that? Tell me what you experienced. Any questions? It is, it's quite annoying um, that there's such a time delay. Ah, so Angel of Stars, hi, thank you for joining us. Um, a sneeze, oh, that's really cool. <laughs> that's really funny. Ah, uh, Laurie, a warmness, warmth in my heart, like a closeness that moved in and out. Christine, that's great. Eva, warm, warmth in my heart. Amazing. Michelle, I felt them behind me, I felt a warmth down my spine. Chantal, a tingling shiver. Ah, oh, Michelle, a, a heat in the back of my neck, a feeling of safety. Katie, I feel more stable. Lancing, hi. A cool breeze on your right arm. Pagati, I felt a warmth around my shoulders. Beautiful. Feeling of safety and peace. Oh, how beautiful. Kitty, felt my right arm being held and warm. Fantastic. So lots of beautiful, um, experiences yes and i'll just read what you wrote um the group here is incredible the happiness and space shared yeah it's, it's beautiful it's really really beautiful the energy here so that yeah 
Katy or Katie, um, I feel more energy in my root chakra, which is amazing because when you're trusting your guides and bringing them in, that is really grounding you because you're feeling safe, right? So Christine said, mine came into the front, round both sides with a strong light, went darker, went left, light and returned. I love that. So you're getting the signature. So let's do it again, okay, this time. And let's invite in a different set of guides. And I'm just gonna, you know, give you this so that you can kind of test these things out, all right? So, oh, hi, Wendy. Hi, lovely to see you. Yeah, tingling in your crown and right behind you. Wendy's my amazing um, assistant, so I'm really glad that she's here. That's beautiful. Okay, right, so let's come into our heart again. And we're going to invite um, our Council of Light to step out. They, they're always here, but we're going to invite them to step out because we have absolute free will and we can invite and uninvite. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that. All right, so we're actually going to invite in a healing guide. Okay, this is what I'm being guided to do. This is my team telling me. So um, we're going to invite in a healing guide now. All right, so we have many guides that work with us. So let's invite um, our healing guides in. I'm just looking at the energy here. It's really, really strong. So come into your heart. You take a beautiful deep breath in and out and invite your healing guide or guides to step in. Okay. And they know that they're going to give you a signature, but we can ask. We can say, please give me a signature so I know it's you. So we're inviting our healing guides. Good. And now we're going to invite them to step out. And now we're going to invite them to step in. Okay, so just get a sense and play with it. Allow them to step in and step out. Okay. Okay. And now check in with me and let me know what difference you got with your healing guide and your counsel. So just see what difference you got. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to wait for the time delay. And let's listen. You know, when I work with my guides, um, I do see them, so it makes it easier. But um, knowing your signatures of your guides is really helpful because uh, you have that sense of trust, so much more trust uh, in the information you get. Okay. Ah, oh, Pagati got, oh, Angel of Stars got reddish wings. Wow. It's amazing. Pagati, a slight pressure behind the eyes. Wow. Uh, so they may be a healing guide that allows you to use your inner vision, which is fantastic. Uh, Christine, that was amazing. My eyes fluttered and had a sense of being lifted on the table. <laughs> wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, Chantelle, warm to the back of my neck. Yeah, perfect. Heat on the left side of me. So Michelle saying that. Maria, hi, Maria. I felt my healing ones around my throat area. Amazing. Eva, different volumes of warmth around my left shoulder. Laurie, a coolness circulating my feet and face and body. Oh, Pat says I can't tell anything. That's okay, Pat, don't worry. Uh, lancing pressure on the bridge of the nose. Wow. Uh, Kitty, felt warm pressure in the center of the heart. I know this guide. Oh, beautiful. Christine, I got a saint figure come in on a light rope and my hands went warm. Wow. Michelle felt sacral root connection and very tall. Brilliant. Wow. What beautiful experiences. Yeah. Okay, good. So we've spoken about um, guides having different signatures. So Wendy said, I felt a strong glow and heat around my head. 
and behind me and felt it was Archangel Raphael. And that's a really good point because we have our angels that work with us as well, which are always guiding us. But for the purpose of this um, this event and, and this presentation for you, I wanted to just stick to guides that we're working with. But if you do get angels, that's perfect as well. Okay, oh, Wendy sneezed as well. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. All right. So let's do some work with our guides now. Okay. So now we've got, we've got, I mean, I work with my guides every day. You know, I feel very blessed. I'm on my mission. I work with my guides every day with people, with groups and for myself. And so I, you know, I really love the fact that I have a, a really beautiful connection to my guides and I totally trust them, but it wasn't always like that. OK, so it took time before I could actually really trust what I'm being told. So don't beat yourself up if you think, oh, my goodness, I don't know whether that's true or, you know, there are ways to test things, but we're, we're not doing um, that kind of work tonight. OK, so, OK, so we're going to bring in. Uh, let's now who should we have? Yeah, let's do that. OK, thank you. So what the guys are guiding me to do is to get you to bring in your Council of Light again. OK, so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to take you through really connecting with listening to them. All right. So I'm going to take you through that. So come back into your heart space, invite your healing guide just to stand and observe and be with you. Good. Take a deep breath. And so we're going to invite our council of light to step in. Be with us. Good. Just take a deep breath. And make sure you've got your hands on your heart. Really connect with your heart space. And close your eyes. And I want you to listen when you ask. Hold on, let me just see what they want to ask. One second. Okay, beautiful. So I want you to ask, what is the next step on my mission? What is the next step on my mission? So you might hear it, you might feel it and have a knowing, or you might see it, you might get shown. So I'll just take a few moments for you there. I'll close my eyes and be present and hold the space for you. What is the next step on my mission? Okay, so we're keeping our Council of Light with us. Okay, and then come back and tell me what you experienced. Now I'm just reading some other messages here. Katie said, I felt my guides as a presence. It's amazing. You know, and it's important to remember as well that, you know, we are, we are true source energy and our guides are an extension of source energy with us. So there really is no separation. Okay. So how did you get on with that? Ah, Laurie got study. I got to publish my book, which is actually in the publishers right now, after winning um, a Hay House Writers Competition, and I have a publishing contract with Babel Press, which is really exciting. So I got told to publish my book and watch exciting things unfold. So that's really great. So Angel of Stars on the right path. Oh, amazing. That's fantastic. Pagati got, I just got the word judge, then I saw some scales and the word psychic judge. Wow. And what you don't know about Pagati is she is a judge. So that's amazing. Well, she works in the legal field. 
So that's amazing, Kati. Eva, I sense it is about expansion of my heart space. Wow, beautiful. Michelle, trusting myself, trusting in myself. Deanna is keep learning. So Christine, connection through compassion. Wow. Okay, Kitty said freedom, find spaces. Freedom, find spaces, good. Lancing, feel better, then work on the website. Yep, going through a shift, Lancing. Going through a shift, we all are. Definitely those of you guys that are on my Souls Mission membership, uh, I can see big shifts happen with you all. Uh, so Michelle, to connect more with my guides for myself instead of doing it so much for others. Yeah, that's one of the reasons, and we're gonna do another thing uh, with our healing guides in a moment, but that's one of the reasons why you know I wanted to do this is because, and I'm gonna talk about how it helps us a bit later on as well. Uh, Wendy, to connect and meditate and trust and take action, yes. Uh, to believe, trusting, trusting in myself, moving forward, Chrissy said. Pat George, red, purple and colour, but no idea on what the next step is. That's okay, Pat, don't worry. Like we're all, you know, learning. We're all on our journey. We're all at different spaces. It's perfect wherever you are. So Maria said, I felt a pressure on my forehead and then saw myself looking down at the earth. Wow. So, you know, really um, seeing things from another perspective. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Okay. So um, feel free to keep typing. Uh, but what we're going to do now is we're actually going to work with our healing guide. Okay. And I'm feeling really drawn uh, to take you through um, a little exercise where you can work with your healing guide and you can actually ask them to give you healing and we all need that right we all need healing we you know we are this incredible being and we know we can heal ourselves but it's also really nice to know that we've got guides that can help us heal and one of the really important things with that is that when we ask it is given it doesn't mean it always shows up immediately it doesn't mean that you know we we instantly um heal from something that's been with us for a long time but what happens is we start to get the insight into what we need to do so it might be change our diet it might be do yoga it might be stop working as much it might be take more time in nature you know it's like all those kind of things that you start getting so we're going to do <clears throat> sorry we're going to do some healing work for ourselves uh, so this is really like a beautiful sacred space for you all right so let's do that now okay so i can't see any more comments so i'm going to go ahead with that okay so come into your heart space and invite your council of light just to stand back a bit they don't they're not going to go anywhere they're still going to be here and let's invite in our healing guides so let's invite our healing guides in Fantastic. Good. And if you feel you want to invite them to step out and step back in, that's also fine. But let's invite them in. And so I want you just to ask your healing guides to help you to scan your energetic field. All right. So we have inner vision. We have our inner knowing and our inner vision. Um, some people call it the third eye, it's actually the bridge of your nose, but I call it inner vision. And so we have our inner guidance, our inner vision at all times. And let's ask our guides to activate that inner vision. And I want you just to imagine almost like a laser beam of light coming down from the crown of your head all the way through your body. And what you're doing is you're asking the guides to assist you in seeing where there is any interruption in light. So imagine that you're scanning your light field and you're looking and you're visualizing where you see any interruptions of light or where you may get a sense that there is an energy or something that stops you. So it might be in your, um, 
to your stomach, it might be in your heart, it might be in your legs, it could be anywhere. So I'm just going to give you a little bit, a few moments for that. So just to ask your guides to scan. I, I tend to do scanning of people's fields with my eyes open. But sometimes it's good to do with your eyes closed. So I'm just going to ask mine to scan me. Okay, good. So if you can actually get a sense of that. All right. And so I want you now to ask your healing guide, and I want you to imagine this, bring an incredible beam of sparkling golden platinum light from the crown of your head all the way through your body and to heal that dusty bit of energy or stuck energy that is in your body, in your field, and ask them to send it down to Mother Earth to be transmuted or up to source to be transmuted. So invite your guide to just clear that energy from you, to heal you, to release it. And you might want to take a deep breath. Just take a deep breath. It's good. Fantastic. All right. And then just have another scan. So ask your guide to help you to scan through again and check to see if you feel like it's easier. It might be easier to scan. It might be clearer. You may get a sense of just a lightness or freedom. Okay. And then keeping your guide there, come back to me and let me know uh, what experience you've had. Okay. No, I'll just wait to see what you experienced, what came up for you, you know, how you've experienced it. Were you able to see? Were you able to sense? Were you given the words? However it was for you and any questions you might have. So I see a question here from KT. Um, how can I feel the Council of Light stronger? So. Um, Katie, this is your inner work. So it is a combination of the inner work. So this is your your journey, your your inner child work, your releasing of um, lifetime after lifetime, your real inner work. And it's also practice. So it's practicing asking your council of light to come in, always do the three step process, clear the space sacred space then invite the guides in okay then ask the questions so you're inviting them in and you're inviting them to give you guidance all right so ah, oh, christine had a, a clearing in the throat eva something in my solar plexus disappeared and now i feel the back of my neck much more wow amazing Michelle, or oh, Pat, I saw a smoothie with fruit. Wow, Pat, that's amazing. I saw a smoothie with fruit and blueberries, blueberries being made. Maybe that's my next step is nutritional needs. It is. That's amazing, Pat. So you got that as an incredible bit of intuition. Well done. And you weren't getting anything, you know, didn't know it was your guide. You couldn't feel it. And yet you were getting that. It's amazing. Um, definitely, we're looking at our diet at the moment, big time in our frequency. Uh, Michelle, heat in my stomach, but my back pain is, and my back pain is eased. Is healing that fast? Healing is instant. 
all right? Healing is instant, but it comes in many layers, all right? So when we heal, so when we're healing, if we were doing uh, deep work, we would we would access the emotion we feel. So um, I always, those guides are very specific about that. And, you know, when we work with healing, we always say, um, give me the healing sound for fear of survival or fear of um, success or fear of failure or something like that. So we would always be really specific and it would be an emotion if we, if we could grasp it. So if it's sadness or guilt or shame or whatever it might be, um, you know, that's what we would be asking to heal. But yeah, it is instant, absolutely. And it will be on many layers. Um, okay, Laurie, felt cool energy around my sacral chakra and after clearing up, I felt my energy uplift so high and happy. I started to cry. Oh, Laurie, that's so beautiful. That's really, really beautiful. So Pagati, dust on heart and lungs, heart and lungs cleared and cleared and a small amount of ache left on right lung. So Pagati, Go back while I'm talking and, and doing this, go back and ask your healing guide to release that and also ask what the emotion is that's held back. All right. Um, let me just see if I can tune in about it. Um, yeah. So you, you, you um, ask them, let me know. And if you don't know, I will tell you what the guides are telling me. But it's really about empowering you. You know, I'm all for the way I teach, the way that I run my groups is about empowering you. Okay, so, oh, when the healing is finished, there's a loud thundering. Wow, <laughs> that's incredible. Uh, Janet, a blockage. Um, so, oh, Janet, Janet. Oh, Janet, I didn't know that was you. I can't see her very well here, the pictures. Um, hi, Janet. A blockage in my third eye. It was a brick wall and bricks were being taken out one by one. Amazing, Janet. I love that. Kitty Foss, I broke out in a warm sweat. Love the concept of dusty bits. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's no attachment to being anything else that is there. Um, there's never anything wrong with you, right? It's just energy. The energy uh, around me became red, then surrounded with pink liver. Wow. Amazing. Uh, Michelle, um, it showed my liver, which I happen to be working on with my naturopath. Amazing. The liver is a planner of the body, so it's responsible for everything. Um, as you know, I'm a naturopath as well. I changed many years ago. And, uh, you know, from Eastern philosophy, if we want to do any work on our body, we work with the liver. Okay, so Chrissy said, my guide sent spirals of light around me like an egg shape from outside to in. There was a lot of darkness around my head, brain, like a brick. This was cleared and pulsing golden light around my head. Wow. Chrissy, I love that. Okay, Michelle, thank you for explaining. You're welcome. Um, yeah, fear, fear and grief. I was actually getting, um, so Pagati, that's absolutely perfect. I was actually getting grief as well so that's brilliant that you got that okay so just go and release that uh christy i've been so i have been releasing more childhood trauma so it made sense much lighter amazing Pagati's now saying her lungs cleared see how quick that is instant uh Linnell, ears are doing some energy something <laughs> amazing uh, so Pagati said fear of life after my divorce divorce and grief for the life i might have had if I was happily married, yeah, absolutely. But you know what? We are living in incredible times. We are living in just amazing times. And this is such a fantastic time for us to really align to who we are. And honestly, our guides are such a blessing from that perspective. When we can work with our guides and know that we are always, always loved, looked after, guided and look at how quickly we can heal ourselves that is so amazing isn't it okay so you know when i trained in uh, meta health and essentially neuropsychology looking at the brain relays uh the um emotional metaphysical cause for dis-ease then essentially it really is 
eye-opening and astounding how we can associate emotion to uh, energetic need to heal, right? And our body telling us that message. Yeah, exactly. Moving forward, moving forward, Lanelle. Fantastic. So how does connecting with your guides help you in your life? Well, absolutely. It is incredible. You know, I love this picture because essentially what it's saying is we can be the alchemist of our life. So we can really manifest, we can co-create with the universe, we can ask our guides, we can ask for, you know, my children and I, um, I have two, two teenagers, one 13 and one nearly 15, and I've taught them, you know, ask the parking angels, ask the sea angels in the restaurant, you know, essentially we have fun with it. We're like, well, actually, we're just going to create and manifest that seat on a plane or we're going to manifest uh, what we, you know, an ability to go somewhere or whatever it might be. And it is an amazing thing definitely to teach your children to connect with their guidance, but for you to have fun with it you know, to really manifest, to really understand who you are, to ask for those people to assist you. You know, if you're watching this now or you're drawn to watch this on the replay, um, if you want to connect with me, then go to my website and sign up to my newsletter. Uh, go to my website, susankennard.co.uk, because I've got free gifts on there. I've got my newsletter and I do a video every week and I do lots and lots of events um, and you can just be with me and work with me and I really will help you to really align to who you are and what you're supposed to be doing in the world because my mission is to help you on your mission right that's 100% why I'm here and however that happens is however that happens but it's really about empowering you so when you're working with your guides and now you have a sense that you can call your guides in. Of course, we have many guides, but you have your recipe, you know, and your recipe is prepare a sacred space with your clearing statement. That might change slightly as mine does a lot, but it's always, it is commanded, okay, that you call, clear, cancel, and delete, etc. And then you ground and you can act. I like the Earth Star, Soul Star but you can use whatever you want to use. I find it brilliant because once it's really set in your consciousness, you can just imagine that star and imagine the star above your head, right? And then you put yourself in that cylinder of light and then you call your guides in, okay? So you call your guides in and you call them in to help you or you call them in to give you some insight in the day, okay? So one of the things um, that I used to do when I first started, and it was it was a long time ago now, you know, it's um, I was 27 when I had my spiritual awakening, which you can find on my um, podcast, The Spiritual Awakener, which is across all, all platforms. And essentially, I was 27 and I'm now 52. So, you know, it was a fair while ago and I definitely resisted being a medium, I resisted working with my guides or even acknowledging it because I was, you know, I worked in child protection, I was a psychologist and, you know, I was an analyst and I did research and, you know, lots of things like that. So I really wasn't interested in that side of things, although I was always interested in astrology and I am an intuitive astrologer as well, um, hence my astrology events that I run uh, each month. But essentially, I didn't really know I didn't really know or remember that we were a soul having a human experience. And I definitely didn't know and remember that we had our guides, even though obviously my soul knew and I knew what I'd come in for. I didn't really know it. So don't beat yourself up that you haven't known how to work with your guides or you haven't remembered what your life path is or your mission because that will all unfold. The key things are inner work. So um, I just want to share with this. So 
your inner work is really doing that inner healing, okay? So you can do that. If you choose to do that with me, if you feel drawn to work with me, then you can come on the Soul's Mission membership, which is really exciting. And we have two intuitive healing retreats a month. And this month it's all about healing karma. And um, we do two astrology events a month, which is lots of activations and healing and looking at the astrology and a private members class, which is actually tomorrow night on Wednesday at 8 p.m. So if you wanted to join the Soul's Mission membership, you can get on that call as well, which is cool. There's also the six week channeling course, which I'm in the middle of now, so I'm not taking any more people, but you can be on my newsletter and find out when the next one comes up. And that's for people that really know how to work with their guides and feel really confident with it. You, you're on my YouTube channel, so that's great. So you can follow me. I do weekly videos and obviously I'm starting to do these masterclasses and you've got my podcast. And sometimes I do do private sessions with people. Um, I'm pretty booked up, but occasionally I will be able to fit in private sessions. But if you are a Souls Mission member, you get first dibs on private sessions and they are much discounted. And you also get half price galactic chambers as well and you can find all of that on my website so you know i've really enjoyed this i hope you've had a great experience i'm just going to look at your um comments and also if you can tell me would you like me to run another masterclass? maybe it can be um about manifesting Maybe it's healing, whatever it is. You know, I've got um, many, many years of working in this field. And if you would like me to run another YouTube masterclass, just let me know in the comments and uh, I can definitely do that with you. But it's been a pleasure to be here with you. Make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already so that you get a notification when I come up. And I'd love you to join my newsletter, get a free gift when you join. And also on my website, there is a button for free gift where you can get a free video course, which is called Awaken the Light, okay? And my new book, which will be coming out, um, published by Bubble Press, Hay House, is called Awaken the Light Within Your Heart. And it's got all my processes. The guides are channeling throughout and they tell me that they're light codes throughout. And you also get to read a little bit about my story. So amazing. So thank you so much for being here. I'm just gonna read your um, messages. Oh, Pragati wants another masterclass, amazing. Uh, Michelle, can you be in more than one chamber? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm about five chambers at the moment. Um, so the Galactic Chambers, they have a whole page on my website. Um, they love um, physical healing, emotional healing, universal love. There's many. You have a look at them. There's many there. Uh, oh, yeah. Thank you, Wendy, for... Um, yeah, thank you for answering that. You can do as many chambers as you like. And um, being on the membership, you you also get, so when I'm trialing a new chamber, all my members get to trial it for free. So I get to um, hear what experiences they have and how they feel in the chambers. Um, I'm actually trialing something, not with my members yet, but around eyesight. So I'm doing an eyesight one at the moment. Uh, so just checking that out to see um, what people are experiencing. And then my members will get that as well. Uh, so, oh, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. Oh, amazing. The, so Katie said, the third vertebrae of my lower back is connected to safety. Wow. I think your book um, is really, um, your book, how interesting. Maybe you're meant to bring a book out. Ah, interesting. So your back is very much about how supported you feel in life. Okay. So it could be, um, that's the sense I'm getting here. Yeah. It could be that you have other souls that you've chosen to work with, to bring in, to help and support you that you don't need anymore. And so just ask, ask for some guidance on that. And maybe you do need to bring a book forward. Okay. Oh, Linnell, thank you. Linnell said, so looking forward to sharing your tools. <laughs> That's great. Well, the tools come from spirit. They come from source. 
Uh, you're very welcome, Carl. Thank you. Chantal, yes to more masterclasses. Amazing. Okay, fantastic. Oh, mediumship. Yeah, mediumship, definitely. Um, I was thinking about doing that in this class and then I thought actually mediumship is um, slightly different and we can be bringing loved ones in and so on. But I find it better to do it in a group situation where I can work with you individually and I can really help you with that. But I felt that the guides masterclass would be really helpful for you to get you started. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you, Carol. Thank you for being here. Beautiful masterclass, profound and clear. Thanks so much. Brilliant. Thanks. Thanks, Carol. Okay, thank you, Michelle. That's really lovely. Oh, Chrissy said it's helped to become more in tune and she would lovely. Oh, when can you buy the book? Well, I'll let you know. It's in the legal team at the moment. So it's actually in the legal department. Uh, so I, I'll just keep everyone updated on my uh, YouTube and on my Facebook. Um, yeah, definitely follow me on Instagram as well, please. It's just my name, Susan Kennard, and then a one. Okay. Uh, more masterclasses. Okay. Well, you're asking and it is given. Okay. Oh, so Wendy said, um, oh, so just one sec. Pat said, another masterclass would be great. I've done the gift from a previously purchased package. Oh, amazing. Oh, good. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Wendy, I love taking this class and taking the mediumship. Yeah, Wendy's been on my channeling class a lot, which is great. My own connection with my guides has really expanded. I highly recommend it to everyone. I started with no experience as well. Amazing, good, good, good. And you're amazing, Wendy, now. You're amazing, your channel's fantastic. Oh, Nancy, Nancy's interested in the eyesight chamber, Wendy. So we'll have to get that trialed out with our members very quickly and then we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll keep you posted, Nancy. Uh, Eva said, thank you so much, Susan. I feel so different now. My body is so much more serenity, especially in the chest area. And I moved to tears. I, do, I would also love another masterclass, okay? Uh, Wendy, Christine, I think Susan's book will come out at the end of the year. Yeah, I reckon it might be a bit before then, actually. I have a feeling it might be October time. It's my feeling. Uh, there's an amazing planetary alignment around October, so I think it might be them. Uh, Sandra, yes, please, for your masterclasses. Thanks for all your kind offer. Lots of love. You're very welcome. So just to say, you know, please uh, join my newsletter and then you can keep in touch with me and keep in touch with what I'm offering. And uh, lots of love. Please share this if you feel it will help somebody else. And um, keep in touch with me. It's been great to be here with you. Okay, bye for now. I'm going to stop the share and just say bye-bye for now and see you very soon. Much love.